Hello, Americans. This is Orson Welles. Southward, turn from the Florida Keys towards the huge pole of the Caribbean, towards the classic islands, the Bahamas, the Leeward, the Windward, the Antilles, scattered like a hundred stones there. Columbus touched land there. San Salvador and Cuba, stepping stone for the conquistador. The islands, the Indies, spice and rum, and the green jungles, the Spanish main. Rum Key, Crooked Island Passage, Turks Island Passage, Providencialis, Ragged Island, Tongue of the Ocean Channel. All the names written in blood and legend, named for the mood of massacre. The sweep of the sea, named for heroes and hell. Between the finger of Cuba to the west and the small island of Puerto Rico to the east, before the islands stream out like a comet tail southward, lies the island of Santo Domingo, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. Haiti, with its harbors and lagoons long white beaches and cliffs where the surf rides in for miles. Where boats dock from African runs, heavy with slaves, filled to the gunwales with chained men. Here one of them stands, stripped, tied to the mast with his eyes blazing. He looks ahead. His lips do not open. He is the son of Gauguino, king of Aradas, of an African tribe. Sold to the French, the Spanish, the English, whoever bids highest. Who will bid for this man, this king? I bid ten pieces of gold. Ten pieces for this giant? Only ten pieces for these shoulders? Twenty pieces. Sold to the French nobleman. This son of a king, this image of God, sold with his eyes and hair and blood. Twenty pieces take him, soul and all, to have and to hold, to whip and to starve, till death do you part. Oh, slave and master. Haiti, the haunted island. Voodoo place, the rhododrums robbing in the hills at night. This is Haiti. Liberty cannot subsist without toil. That too was Haiti. Is Haiti. The voice of Toussaint Louverture, whose father was a king in Africa, who lived to see slavery die in Haiti. There's not much recorded in the Book of Time how Haiti fought for the United States. 800 Negroes from the sunfields of the Caribbean fought in the snowfields of the colonies. And in the end, victory. Liberty! Liberty leaped the Atlantic. Barricades rose in the streets of Paris. And the guillotine fell. And fell. And fell. The people, slow in their wrath, swift to vengeance. And the tyrants learned that slaves, too, are people. I wrote here, in the name of the National Assembly of France, hereby abolish slavery in all the French colonies. Whereupon, Toussaint Louverture, the black man of Haiti, joined with the French garrisons to exterminate the Spanish and English. Men die, the people live. The little aged, patient one, Toussaint. And there was with him the fierce, uncompromising Henri Christophe. Were we to cause torrents of blood to flow, to maintain our liberty, to fire seven-eighths of the globe, we are innocent before God. It came to pass that the black men of Haiti were visited by the English commander. I had imagined you were different men to Sam. We are all the same men under God. Come over to our side. 
You will be king of this island. Stay with us, Toussaint. And be rich. I am rich. I have a wife and many sons and the love of my people. Are there other riches? If so, the slave has not the wisdom of the master. I tell you to take your troops home. To leave our harbors under your own sail, or else we shall give your sails a more dangerous wind. You will buy and sell us no longer. The slave trade is over. We come to a new century. Mass was said in all the churches. Santa Domingo and Haiti were independent, with loyalty to France. Toussaint was governor, and a constitution was drafted in 1800, prepared for dispatch to Napoleon by the Council of the Islands. How shall we address the dispatch? His Most Reverend Excellency, or Majesty. That is it. Your Majesty. We shall give him the most respectful of all salutations. To Citizen Bonaparte, First Consul of the French Republic. <laughs> First Consul of the French Republic. So the liberator of Haiti addressed the liberator of France. In France now was young Simon Bolivar, soon to be called liberator in South America, to be called in history the liberator, and to deserve the name. This Napoleon, he is a very great man. Is he not Bolivar? Close the window. So... The liberator of Europe has turned tyrant. Cannot a man break chains without chaining others? Europe is a disease. I will go back to Venezuela. There is work to be done. There is hope yet in the new world. They helped Bolivar in Haiti, lent him money and gave him refuge. In all the Americas, the kings of Europe were the common enemy. New World History tells a long story of the fight against kings. In France, Napoleon rose with the revolution and then betrayed it, crowning himself emperor. In Haiti, Christophe rose with the revolution, and Christophe crowned himself emperor. Have you heard of La Ferrière, the great mountain fortress? You can see it today from your Pan-American clipper, Christophe Citadel. The Citadel? Ah, yes. My father died building Christoph Citadel, and his brother, and my mother's brother. Never had such a fortress been built in such a place, high on a cliff. Its mighty prow streamlined like a battleship's bows. Cannon wait on its ramparts, one for each day in the year, on guard at the endless echoing galleries. Speak softly of the Citadel. The Citadel is terrible. He who made it is terrible. But say it softly. Softly. Better still, do not say it. Just know it. Know it. The citadel could not be taken. No one would conquer it. And no one ever did. But no one came. A tyrant built this bastion against a terror that never, never came. The futile guns stand speechless in the empty galleries. And where is Christoph, king of kings, Tambu Papalwa, send out the call. Tambu Mamalwa, pound on his gravestone. Tambu Tamplant, give the dead king tongue. I heard the drums call down the sleeping years. I walk again. Christoph, the king. Henri Christoph, monarch of the north. Black man. Christoph. King. I fought with Toussaint. I ate at his table. I learned of those things men set down in their books. It is not given to me to read. Such things are dangerous for slaves. But I became king. I had a gold carriage and fountains and baths, Roman baths. A small fat dwarf to make me smile when I was sad. And I was often sad. My ships carried cargoes of cotton and rum and gold and indigo, silver and spice. They brought me back velvet and satin and silk. And cannons and powder and swords and pistols and muskets to back my lords. And a white man from France to hide my gold. 
an agency. You sent for me? I'm out here on the terrace. What information? The last one died an hour ago. We had no chance to talk? None, Majesty. I took them to my quarters where a feast was spread in celebration of the sealing of the treasure room. How did you do it? Poisoned wine? Yes, Majesty. We drank a toast to the great secret. And they are all dead? Yes, Majesty. We alone know where your gold is buried. Only Christoph the king. And you, Paul, the engineer. The secret is safe with me, Majesty. I've sworn on my honor. Sixty million francs. The great price. Majesty, the honor of a gentleman is above price. Your friend, General Brunet, a gentleman? Oh, but assuredly, he's my kinsman. Toussaint Louverture. He's not my kinsman. He was my friend. Majesty, I, I don't understand. General Brunet gave Toussaint his word of honor that Toussaint would leave with safety after the parley. Do you recall what happened to Toussaint? I hear Napoleon gave Brunet a medal for doing that honorable thing. He says your kinsman. Oh, by marriage only, Your Majesty. And after what you've told me, I renounce him. He's a man without honor. Honor? Renounce? I'm sometimes glad I was never taught to read words or write them. Deed. When you do a thing, it's done. You can depend on it. Are you cold, Monsieur Dupont? Why, well, it's the night wind, Majesty. If Your Majesty pleases, I'll go to my quarters. The night wind is cold. Yeah, I'll take my cape. I have my things to set in order. I find the night wind soft and warm. My ship sails at dawn, Majesty. The bon chance, yes. It sails with the morning tide. With Your Majesty's permission, could we talk less near the edge of the parapet? I, I'm troubled by a vertigo at great height. I once marched a company of soldiers off this battlement to impress a British general with the disciplining of my troops. Rather a costly method of impressing him, was it not, Your Majesty? No, he concluded a peace as a result, and I saved the lives of ten troops. Nothing is so impressive or final as a deed. Monsieur Dupont. I agree with you. Now may I take my leave? Monsieur Dupont, you address me without use of my title. It was without intention, Your Majesty. Sure, I'm a king. You are a commoner. The white man. I have scars on my back that were made by a white man's whip. I was a slave. Is it fair, Your Majesty, to blame all white men because some have used you ill? I've known many white men whom I like, young Marquis de Lafayette, a good white man. I was a young a young waiter then in a hotel. Of course you know that. Your Majesty, all, all your Europe... called for volunteers to sail north to join Lafayette who was helping the Americans. I sailed with eight hundred other Negroes from Haiti. We helped the Americans win their battle. They were fighting for liberty and equality. So we helped them. But still they buy and sell slaves. And I think now that when white men say liberty and equality, they mean it only for white men. And only those white men who are rich and powerful. Now it was late, Monsieur Dupont. You completed your work here and have earned the sum I promised you. Shall I send it to your wife? I don't understand. I'm not a thief, Monsieur Dupont. But you are too much a man of the world to remain in my service. It is not practical that I show you mercy. In the name of God, Major. I will take my cape, Monsieur. I have a fondness for this cape. <coughs> the walls are sheer for a thousand feet. I finished my walk that night alone. I am Ari Christoph, King of the North. And my secret sleeps with my bones. Why is it so quiet? I have not heard a cock crow or a dog bark. Your people have killed all the fowls in the neighborhood and taken the dogs and goats to the hills so that no noise will disturb your rest. I feel no pain, Doctor. Only a numbness like a great cold. When the people learn, there'll be trouble. Who will fear a king with dead legs? Are there candles burning for me? You think I'll die? It's in the hands of God. I don't trust God. I think perhaps he disapproves of me. Give me medicine. I'm doing all I can. I sent for another doctor who has more wisdom, older wisdom. If you bring a book or into the palace, I shall leave. I'll have no dirty witch doctor pouring over my patient. I am still king, Monsieur le Doctor. You are arrogant in my presence and address me without title. You are very sure that I will not leave this bed again. Well, I can kill from my bed. Healy! Healy! 
Bring me my pistols. Wait, Leach. Guards! Stop that walk! Guards! Yes, Majesty. Where are the palace guards? At the gates, Majesty. A mob is forming there. Wait, no time. Where is the book? I sent for a peak and jury. Majesty, none of the bokors will come. Word is out that the people have cast a thousand silver bullets. A thousand silver bullets. Rudder drums are talking in the hills. Healy, go out there and kill every man. Every woman. Every child in the mob. Someone in that mob shouted, down with the king. Yes, Majesty. Healy! Yes, Majesty. Actually, my pistol. Here they are, Majesty. Two silver bullets. Those two. Here, Majesty. Come back here. Come back here. Healy! Help me! I go to my citadel. Dealing! Antoine! Celestine! Celestine! Ah! I'm on my throne. In my palace. They look for me with their silver bullets. Let them. I have my own. My own silver bullet. They will not find me. Who says a living dog is better than a dead lion? Look for me at the full of the moon, at the call of the drums. My ghost still walks. I am Christoph, King of the North. And my secret sleeps with my bones. We've just heard from the ghost of a dictator. If time permitted, we take you now to the island of St. Helena for a word or two from another dictator. You can't raise his particular spirits with tom-toms, however. Field drums and kettle drums invoke the shade of the Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. They know the ritual in Berlin. No time for dictators is... I mean exactly that. No time for dictators. I'd just like to mention here that tyrants multiply. You can't trust an ocean to keep them away any more than you trust one of their own treaties. There simply isn't room enough on our globe for the pettiest despot that ever cracked a whip. So it wasn't enough to say that Napoleon was just too bad for Europe. He was also too bad for America. He was too bad for Haiti, where his bad example made possible the Emperor Christophe. In France, the great plantation owners, in extraordinary session, and after extraordinary deliberation, came out with an extraordinary announcement. If there are to be no more slaves, we are faced with the fact that there are to be no more colonies. Excellent, gentlemen. Perfectly logical the way you stated it, or the other way around. No slaves, no colonies. Well, Whittier, we might have credited you with an epigram. What about Napoleon at this moment? Remember the letter Toussaint addressed to him? Citizen Bonaparte. He dares to call me that citizen. I, who conquered all Europe, I, the emperor, to be called citizen by a slave? And what nonsense have we here, a draft of a constitution? Why has this been allowed to happen? Your Excellency, there is no rebellion. Toussaint Louverture has united the colony for France. I have 25,000 men to spare. They are in need of maneuvers. The great Napoleon, frightened. The conqueror of all Europe fears a man on an island. There's the name of the man, and Napoleon says, Search out this door, sir. This slave who walks like a man. Tear out this root of freedom wherever it grows. I, Napoleon, order it to be done. While on the heights, over the bay of Samana, Toussaint looks to the peaceful Caribbean counting the sails as they slice the horizon and converge to the harbor. His face is calm. His hand grips his sword. I have counted 50 sails, to say. 56, Christophe. 56 messengers of hell. Oh, that the seas could open and carry them down. But my hatred could strike them as a thousand arrows. Against our words of peace, they've sent their iron. But I swear to this sky we shall teach them what war is. We shall prove to the world that fifty ships, a thousand ships, cannot make us kneel again, once having learned to stand. With 
with his own hand, Toussaint set fire to his own beautiful house while his wife wept. The white man came to conquer easily, but he ran into iron mountains and iron men. He found the granite of freedom and broke an army against it. Later, when the land was devastated with war, the fields and cities ruined, Napoleon Bonaparte promised freedom to the island. Who's that? How do you know they won't betray their promises? They're weak. We can strike now and be free forever. I have given my word for peace. I have put my sword away, Christophe. We are not cannibals, but men of honor. And the world must judge us so. You trusted too well, Toussaint. You were not born for this treacherous year. You came in peace, on a pleasant day, unarmed, alone, at his kind invitation. And it was over. Quicker than a lamp was put out. Quicker than the falling of a star. You stepped over the threshold, and your great history was ended. You, Toussaint, stripped of your epaulets. You, warrior, dragged aboard ship in the dark, manacled there on the deck. You, breaker of chains, now put into chains. And before your very eyes, the sails filled. And Haiti, surrounded by stars and water, your home... Your island was left behind. Did you weep as the sea enclosed you? What did you speak to the night? What did your voice say? They have in me struck down but the trunk of the tree. The roots are many and deep. They will shoot up again. Better he was struck dead upon the deck. Better a simple death anonymous at sea. But Napoleon had greater plans. The dungeon for Toussaint. Locked below the earth behind huge doors. There he is brought to be broken. Would he beg? Would he weep? I will stand here until the door of heaven opens. I will be as strong as these stone doors. Napoleon waited. And all he received were letters. Calm letters. Asking that the crime of Toussaint be explained. Months went by. And then one day, Napoleon writes a letter to the caretaker of the prison in which Toussaint was kept. I order you to take a trip. You may go anywhere you wish for one week. Toussaint Louverture was left alone. He starved to death. The year... 1803. Earlier, we told you the story of Christophe, whose reign followed Toussaint's death. We've seen Christophe die on his jungle throne. He and the Emperor of Europe, the world against both of them, both breathing their last in the same chapter of history. In Christophe's time and before and since, prayers are still said in the hills to the old gods of the Congo, Sobo, Nogan, Agahan, Gambala. I remember a dark night on one of the islands, driving the mountains. I stopped my car because a crowd of people grouped around lanterns in the center of the highway. Blocked my way. A tall man approached the car and spoke. Bonsoir, Blanc. Bonsoir. Has there been an accident? No, monsieur. It is that we are burying a man who has died. Why do you bury him in the middle of a public highway? So the both cars will be afraid to come and dig him up, make him into a zombie. Tell me, how are zombies made? I would give ten goods to know. Give. There you are. When a man dies, if the both cars dig him up before the sun rises, they do something secret that only the both cars know. Then the man's buddy walks again, and the Bocas sell them to work in the cane fields. Why do they go to their homes after they're brought back to life? Have they no memory of home? They have no minds or souls, monsieur. Only their buddies live again. They have finished covering the grave, monsieur. You can pass on now. I've told you all I know of zombies. (laughs) 
I talked to many people in the West Indies about zombies. Wherever I went throughout the islands, I heard these tall tales. In the Bahamas, Jamaica. There, the witch doctors are called Obey Men, and the duppies are the ghosts of dead men who walk in the night and moan at the moon. Black magic, charms, and witchcraft. Bimini to Trinidad. Always the same answers from those who live in these islands. Here are deep matters not to be dismissed by crying blasphemy. But the last word I got on the zombie situation came from a West Indian. A young Negro doctor. I'd like you to hear what he has to say on these matters. Mr. Wells, Mumbo Jumbo is dying out. Anyway, it's dying out here in the Americas. All kinds of mumbo-jumbo, not just voodoo. Christophe retreated into the past and looked for sanctuary among the witch doctors. As you say, he was only following a bad example. When Citizen Bonaparte became Emperor Napoleon, that was the mumbo-jumbo of old Europe. The tribal gods of the Nazis are mumbo-jumbo. Fascism is mumbo-jumbo. And as to zombies, the most authentic specimens I know are the people living under Hitler and the other Axis witch doctors. Their minds and souls have been taken away from them. They are the living dead. The way we look at it, that's what this war is all about. To free the zombies from their spell, to get rid of the witch doctors. And I like what we heard Toussaint Louverture say tonight. It goes for all us Americans. You will buy and sell us no longer, he said. Remember, the slave trade is over. We have come to a new century. That's the best possible way to end this program. Thank you. Good night, Americans. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard the third in the series of Latin American programs brought to you by Orson Welles, who has recently returned from an eight-month visit to South America 